Number nine, federal public hearing considered three requests for a waiver from the moratorium on commercial development to handle the burden. One of the locations is 5771 Miller Road, which is the former Word and Bait Shop. 9680 is the Oswego Valley Insurance Company, and 9643 is the former Burden Hardware Store on Main Street. I approve the publication from Richard Key of the Eagle Newspapers. The notification was indeed published, and proof of posting from town clerk Tracy M. Castleman that the notice was posted on the bulletin board at the proper time. Blaine? This uh, is a request just to relief from the moratorium to allow these uh, companies to begin uh, some exterior work uh, siding. Uh, Broad and Bait Shop wants to put on a new roof because they have leaking inside. So it's just basically exterior work to dress up these properties. And because it's in the moratorium area, they need a, or because it's in the area, they need really looking more important. And with the board, I think you may recall from the past is that you'd have to make a finding that this would um, be a substantial financial burden on these properties to, to make them wait any longer um, to do these improvements. Um, your moratorium isn't going to be in effect much longer, and your design standards are just about finalized, which is the reason for the moratorium in the first place. But um, you may want to consider allowing these property owners to have some relief so they can start to get to work. I'll open the public hearing at this time and solicit comments from those who are in favor of the waiver. Can we name and address, please? Lynn Carroll, I live at 5419 Bennett Street, and I'm in favor of you got to get a little bit closer, please. Lynn Carroll, I live at 5419 Bennett Street, and I'm in favor of working in the for for the street. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I'd like to speak in favor. <laughs> Mr. Poppet, would you like to, um, <laughs> you should be carrying on a conversation back here, would you like to speak in favor? Sure. <laughs> uh, my name is Bob Poppet, I live at 87 Singapore Riverside House Path in Brewerton, and I'm all in favor of fluffing up Brewerton any possible way we can, I think I agree with uh, Helen wholeheartedly. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor? Does anyone like to uh, speak in the opposition? I'll close the public hearing at this time. Solicit town board comments. Of course, I have a question. Heather. Yes. When does the moratorium end? Oh, that's a good question. I think it was extended for six months in the January time frame. So and June, early July, something around there is what um, <coughs> I recollect. And I actually spoke with Paul Fritz today um, about the status of our um, zoning regulations. I know he did a walk of the downtown Burton area with Wayne and uh, Pat Leon and I think Mark Parrish to determine what areas should fall in which zoning classifications. And he's planning on setting up another meeting for that committee to get together and finalize the regulations, I think, within the next couple weeks. Um, so hopefully that will be back in front of you, and when that is addressed, the more time will expire on its own terms. Okay, I just want to know if the three people have had opportunity to look at what is recommended for design standards, and if what they're proposing is close to that. I'm not sure if they have, but the, the more term itself also requires them to be compliant with whatever um, regulations are put into place, so that base is covered, so to speak. Any comments on that, Wayne? No, I was just going to uh, say that they, they are aware of the standards. They, okay. They understand. Them. Yes, that makes me more comfortable because we've spent at least two years doing this and to go forward with three folks right down the middle of the road, so to speak, without ha any, you know, any requirements to comply with what we're planning it isn't very wise. But if, the, if they're in that mode, then I'm happy to. I'd like to make a motion. Motion to approve is presented. Second. Ms. Tarawaki. Yes. Mr. Ryback? Yes. Mr. Coral? Yes. Mr. Dizinski? Yes, just one small comment. You know, I just like to thank people like Mr. Pop.
Toppin and Helen Carroll and Mr. Daly and anyone else up there. And if I've forgotten anybody, you know, these people have taken it upon themselves to start spending their own personal money to help revitalize the, the handle of burden. You know, we've got money for it. The unfortunate part is when you work with the federal government and the state government, it's a long, drawn-out process. It takes a lot longer than any one of us up here would like to go through. Unfortunately, if you happen to miss one of the steps, they'll take your money away from you. So we're very cautious. We want to make sure that this project is a success, which I know we're going to help with because of people like Mr. Poppick, Helen, and the others up there. The one with the hardware store, we've seen the paint, um, the paint, different schemes and things. She's going to, it's going to look great. I mean, uh, the, the Mr. I think it was Mr. Featherly. Is it Featherly? Flaherty. 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 He's going to start redoing the house that's right next to Daly's on the left back to its original condition. So you're going to see a lot of things happening up there. You know, unfortunately, it's taking a little bit longer than I'd like to see, but it's going to be great when it's done. But thanks to everybody up there that's been supportive and patient, especially you about it. Thanks, John. Excuse me, but could I add another name to your list? Bob Walsley. <laughs> yes, Mr. Walsley, our, our local judge. He did a, a very nice project up there. Thanks, Wayne, for covering for me. <laughs>